Welcome to Behind the Scenes for Behind the Wheel, the safety and economics of drag racing, brought to you by Nicodemus, Thor, and Casey, based on experiences at National Trails Raceway and research done outside of those experiences. At National Trails Raceway, we learned a lot about racing. First and foremost, we noticed that the track was a lot shorter than we would have expected. It was only a fourth of a mile. This is very typical of most raceways. National Trails Raceway was constructed in 1964 by Clark Rader Sr. along with sons Ben and Clark Jr. The facility was built for racing and racing only, and concessions and other aspects of the now current track were added much later after it was originally built. The surface of the track is made from concrete and asphalt. Most racers take this into consideration as friction and the material of the surface is a huge factor in racing. The track runs north to south, but most of the time racers are concerned about the angle or the friction of the track. National Trails Raceway has a large history. One of the most famous aspects of its history is that it held the first all-female NHRA final. This was the first NHRA-sponsored event to have all females, let alone be held in Ohio. The fastest speed ever recorded at National Trails Raceway was 336.15 miles per hour. And that is fast, especially in Ohio. Fuel consumption of racing is very, very, very expensive. An average car going down a fourth of a mile trail consumes four to five gallons of fuel during a pass. That is way different than the gallon consumption of most of our cars, and way more expensive considering the price of nitromethane fuel at $16 per gallon. An additional 12 gallons is usually added in the backing into the racing position, as well as the burnout. This places the total cost of one run down a fourth of a mile trail at about $250 in gasoline alone. Imagine that when you go out for a drive and complain about gas. And now for the most important part of drag racing. No, it is not just about the speed, it is about the safety precautions. To keep drivers safe when making a pass, the NHRA has provided specific rules and regulations to different drivers depending on their class. Classes are the expected time that the drivers can make during a pass. Let's start on the slower end of the scale, the 14.99 class. In this class, a one pint can must be attached to the radiator to collect any overflow. Also, there is a max limit to the amount of rubber fuel that can be added to the car. This max is 12 inches. A proper hold down system must be attached to the battery to make sure that the battery does not move at all during the pass. Although this may sound like a given statement, the lug nuts and studs must be in place during the pass and this will be checked before the driver can take off. Moving on, we have the 13.99 class. In this class, specific helmets are required to be worn, but they cannot just be any helmets, they must be SFI approved. Examples of SFI approved helmets include the Dot and Snell models of helmets. These cars that race 13.99 also must have an operational drive shaft loop. This adds power and torque to the vehicle. In addition to the drive shaft loop, a steel loop behind the drive shaft loop must be there to prevent traction from breaking the drive shaft. Although traction is necessary for fast speeds, it can add wear and tear to the drive shaft. Thus, this additional steel loop provides support. Everybody's working for the weekend. Everybody 
going even faster with the 11.99 class, things start to heat up. Here, regular seatbelts are not an option, as it is required that a driver must have a 3 inch wide and 5 point harness seatbelt, as this provides far more protection if the driver were to be in an unfortunate scenario. The car must also be approved with an SFI scatter shield. The clutch and flywheel of the car must also be SFI certified. Now at one of the fastest classes, the 10.99, there are much more regulations here. Here, fire hazard is an extreme emergency situation. In order to help prevent this, protective clothing must be worn, at least a one layer jacket on the driver. In addition, Standard parts cannot be used on the car. No run-of-the-mill parts are going to do, as you must find the most professional aftermarket axles and harmonic balancers to be added to the cars. And finally, a roll cage, which is a high-strength steel tubing around the interior of the car, will help prevent the car from caving in in an unfortunate accident. <laughs> Moving on to the fastest class at 9.99 seconds, many more safety precautions are put in place in order to keep the driver just as safe as he or she would be going slower speeds. One example would be the requirement of a more durable roll cage with 8 attachment points. This once again keeps the car from collapsing in on itself if an unfortunate accident occurs. A window net is placed over top of the windows of the car in order to keep the driver inside in the case of an accident that would eject him from the vehicle. Fireproof clothing and a neck collar must be worn throughout the race. This is normally checked by an official before the start, and it's second nature for most racers. An external electrical shutoff switch is placed on the car in order to quickly and efficiently shut off any electrical components. A car going 150 miles per hour or more uses a parachute to utilize wind resistance to slow down. Racers in this class are usually approved by NHRA and have a sticker placed on their license to allow them to race at these speeds. Moving on, we have the 13.99 class. In this class, specific helmets are required to be worn, but they cannot just be any helmet. Money is the root of all evil, and with racing, it's no different. Racing can be an extremely expensive sport, with cars costing well into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. By far, the most expensive component of a car is the engine, costing on average around $60,000. Tires can cost upwards to $4,000, and they must be replaced constantly. This total adds up quickly. The clutch alone can cost around $10,000, which is 10 times the amount of a normal car. Transmissions can cost around $12,000, and must be maintenance quite often in order for it not to be replaced. Compared to commercial vehicles, the $1,800 in exhaust cost may seem quite expensive, but in reality, it is inexpensive compared to the other components placed into the race car. Now on to the less expensive side of racing. A helmet, which is required by most classes, can cost on average around $200 for a decent quality. The drive shaft loop is a part of the car that must be replaced quite often because it is exposed to the outside forces. Luckily, however, compared to most other parts, it is quite inexpensive. The liquid overflow component of a car are pants containers that are attached to it to stop liquids from spilling onto the track. Some tracks across the country require a fee to be paid if these fluids or liquids are spilled onto the track. So it is a smart idea to invest in this comparatively lower priced item. The electrical shutoff switch is only used by race car drivers traveling at the highest speeds. Therefore, those driving at a slower speed are not required to have this part. However, those going at a faster speed are, and it's an important safety component that must be used. An automatic transmission lockout shifter is not required on most vehicles. It is more so a luxury component. For those who seek an easier access button to shift the transmission state, the cost of the automatic transmission lockout shifter is justified at $175.